children today we will learn about matter in chemistry what is matter when you look around yourself you see many things like the plants animals desks chair book etc all these things are of different shapes and sizes and they are living as well as non living so all substances whether living or non living are composed of matter it can be categorized as living and non living matter and non living matter can also be of two types natural and man made matter let us study about this in details what is living matter you know that the earth is home to all kinds of plants and animals they can grow move and reproduce on their own so these are all living matter the non living matter most of the matter in this universe is non living the air you breathe the soil on which you are standing these are all non living that means all these materials they do not grow move or reproduce of its kind so these non living matter can be natural as well as man made natural because air is natural you cannot make it or soil is also naturally formed but the other things around you like the desk or the electric bulb whatever you see are man made in this picture you can see that cotton wool wood rock sand petroleum these are all natural matter now petroleum is found in crude form but when it is refined we get the petroleum in our refineries now these man made materials like the asphalt cement glass concrete plastic these are all made by human beings so these are all man made materials so natural matter occurs in nature and more useful substances can be made out of that like the wood coal silk water etc whereas man made matter is artificially prepared from natural matter like the soaps the detergents medicines plastics etc different substances are made up of different kinds of matter like the chair is made up of wood or the bucket is made up of plastic the book is made up of paper so different materials are used to make different objects composition of matter let us study about the composition of matter in details a little bit matter is made up of very small particles what are these small particles they are known as atoms an atom is the smallest possible unit of matter that exhibits all the properties of matter these atoms cannot exist independently and combine with one another for example if i talk about oxygen i always say as o2 or write it as o2 we do not write it as o but why because one atom of oxygen cannot exist independently so here in this figure you can see that there are two atoms of oxygen these two atoms of oxygen are adhering to each other combining with each other so when you take a single oxygen atom it is the smallest possible unit of matter and this will obviously show all the properties of oxygen but it cannot exist independently so it needs to combine with another atom 
to form one molecule. So, one oxygen atom plus another oxygen atom will form O2 that is a molecule of oxygen. So, what is a molecule? It is also the smallest unit of matter which can exhibit all the properties of matter and it is capable of independent existence. This is the main difference between an atom and a molecule. Because an atom cannot exist independently, but a molecule can exist independently. But both these atoms and molecules cannot be seen with our naked eye. See the next example, the water molecule. Now in this water molecule, you can see that one oxygen atom is present and there are two hydrogen atoms which are combining with this oxygen atom. So one molecule of water consists of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. See the formula over here. It is always written as H2O. This means that two atoms of hydrogen are present and one atom of oxygen is present to make a molecule of water. Let us study about the characteristics of particles of matter. The first point, particles of matter are always in random motion because they possess kinetic energy. That is, particles of matter are never stagnant. They do not stay in one place. They are in random motion. Continuously they are moving around. And when they are moving around, it means that they possess kinetic energy, which gives them the movement. Now, the motion increases with the increase in temperature. So, you must have seen, you take a glass of water, normal water. It is normal. You can understand that it is normal. But the molecules of water or the particles of water, they are moving randomly. They are not in one place. But you cannot understand it with your naked eye. But when you take this glass of water and you start heating it, you find that it starts boiling and vapors come out of that water. It means that as you increase the temperature, the water molecules get agitated. They keep on moving very randomly, gain kinetic energy and as such they move out of that vessel in the form of vapor. Second point, particles of matter are held together by a force of attraction that exists between them known as intermolecular force of attraction. You have already studied about this in physics. That is particles of matter, they attract each other. So this force of attraction is known as intermolecular force of attraction. And intermolecular force of attraction can be of two types. When two similar molecules are attracting each other, it is known as cohesive force and when two different molecules are attracting each other, then that force is known as adhesive force. The third point, particles of matter have space between them, which is called intermolecular space. It is because the random motion of particles. Now these particles, when they are in random motion, sometimes come close to each other, otherwise they remain far apart. So, intermolecular space between the molecules are formed. One small example. You take a glass full of water. Now, you know that you cannot add any more water to it because it will spill out of the glass. Now, you put two spoonful of salt into it and keep on stirring the water. You will find that the salt dissolves in water. 
but the level of water does not rise because there are intermolecular spaces so the salt molecules also enter into these intermolecular spaces of water and as such there is no increase in the level of water this shows that there are intermolecular gaps between the water molecules